good afternoon professors on behalf of computer science and engineering department from sri krishna college of engineering and technology i welcome you all for the act sponsored fdp on deep learning and visual computing second day session 4 today we have a resource person mr srinivasan cto and director of cliso technologies chennai with us to provide a talk on visual computing and neural network let's start to welcome you sir yeah Uh, Mr. Srinivasan Danukrishnan is a chief technology officer and director of Clico System Technology Solutions Private Limited, a software product company incorporated in Chennai. He plays a key role in defining the strategy in terms of business development, resource development, and all. Uh, he has more than 25 years of experience in IT field. he focuses on providing collaborative leadership to product research and development offering services and training and building it higher to create a sustainable value and gain a competitive edge with an array of dedicated professionals in it sector his primary interest include artificial intelligence and data analytics driven secure smart sa saas applications for businesses he is instrumental in designing and developing products for glosses learning glosses hcm cloud glosses health and glosses analytics platforms he has earlier held the position of senior researcher at indian institute of technology karakpur he published 60 research papers in various reputed international conferences and journals including the role of a program committee member reviewer and session chair based on his outstanding research service he has been selected as a candidate for inclusion in the edition of marcus who is who in the world new jersey usa he is frequent speaker at industry and academic events through active involvement in offering hands on workshops for data science using python r and scala deep learning using uh, pytorch and tensor flow and many more um, he holds a master degree in computer science and engineering from anna university and master degree in business administration from university of madras sir i welcome you sir uh, we have such a wonderful person uh, to provide a talk on visual computing and deep neural networks uh, with this short introduction i hand over the sessions to sir uh, mr srinivasan sir oh, thank you madam thank you thank you thank you, thank you sir. now i am going to share my screen Please give the option for sharing the screen. Yes, sir. We have an option. Ah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. One second. One second. now the ppt is visible yes sir visible sir visible sir. Uh, good morning all the participants first of all i would like to express my sincere and profound thanks to the coordinators uh, and professors and head of the department for having invited me to deliver the uh, talk on visual computing and deep neural networks and also uh, uh, i express my thanks to the uh, department and the management of uh, sri krishna college of engineering and technology so in this session what i am going to deliver from the industry point of view how we are uh, tackling the problems and issues in terms of design development and implementation and research perspective so i will cover a lot of concepts in visual computing and deep neural networks finally i will show a few demo uh, first we will see 
what kind of impact we are having in industries in terms of deep learning then we will spend a few minutes on deep how do you build deep neural networks using python and keras frameworks then we will concentrate on convolutional neural networks for image analytics using tensorflow then how the image captioning which is one of the popular applications from the visual computing that could be developed using pytorch and finally let us concentrate on few examples behind deep generative models as far as the deep learning industries are concerned deep learning is nowadays becoming very popular and we uh, really leverage leverage the power of deep learning in various industry sectors smart retail and healthcare transportation education communications media and entertainment and automotive electronic system manufacturing energy and utilities connected vehicles insurance everywhere we apply uh, deep learning in terms of industrial use cases when i talk about from the point of deep learning first of all deep learning is a subset of machine learning which is in turn subset of the artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence is the uh domain big domain under that domain machine learning gets involved under machine learning we concentrate on deep learning specifically in terms of the neural networks deep neural networks okay so the whole idea is uh, you will be having a different uh, kind of the data which you are looking at with respect to your problems the data may be in terms of the text data or audio data or video data or image data since the topic is uh, in connection with the visual computing we would like to concentrate on only uh, image data sometimes video data like that okay what are the challenges existing and what are the problems existing in visual computing one of the very popular problems is classification image classification image classification i think uh, the uh, esteemed professors and students can work on image classification and similarly object detection problems and all these problems are not new for the deep learning prior to the deep learning also such image classification object detection were dealt but uh, then why we are applying deep learning nowadays the whole idea is the feature learning becomes very simpler because earlier uh, in terms of the pre processing it took much more time not for the classification side only for the pre processing side I, I assume that the targeted audience is having some prerequisite with respect to data science or uh, AI or machine learning. So, having assumed that, I move uh, in that direction. Again, uh, when you talk about the classification, for example, I give a set of dogs and cats, and uh, I ask the machine to classify. So, the machine itself is able to classify a set of uh, dogs or class. Uh, cats from the given set of images is a very popular problem this is the two class problem similarly uh, i can make use of the multi class classification problem also but when you are going to look at such classification problem because these are the use cases applications that i am talking um, how we are industries are solving the problems when you are looking at the two class classification problem or multi class classification problem uh, the whole idea is the entire image for that image Uh, you assign the particular class label. I think uh, everybody knows that uh, what is the data set, what is the uh, samples and features, how training and testing will be carried out for the data science or machine learning projects. And but in the image classification, what will happen? The class label is assigned to the entire image. But when you want to move with the uh, object direction, okay, in terms of the multiple objects. we want to look into the semantic segmentation that is one research problem another research problem instance segmentation so semantic segmentation problems and instance segmentation problems could be solved by different uh, methods and uh, of course everyone should be very strong in solving uh, mathematical problems and all these applications are well suited for self driving cars and robo vision and medical imaging now you can ask one question what are the differences Uh, between uh, traditional segmentation or uh, what are the difference between classification and semantic segmentation or what are the differences between semantic segmentation and instance segmentation actually what is happening in the case of semantic segmentation you will the image itself will be having multiple objects and also you are assigning the class label to every pixel inside the image you are assigning the class label to every pixel in the image 
Because of that, what will happen? The location of the object can be identified. The shape of the object can be identified. Which pixel belongs to which object? So all these uh, characteristics or properties can be visualized or understood through semantic segmentation. But if the, suppose, for example, if there are five people in the particular image, and only the bordering with respect to five people will be shown through the semantic segmentation. But in the instant segmentation, what happens? Even when you happen to see five different people, person one, person two, person three, everything will be considered separate instances. Separate instances. So in that way, the instant segmentation will also be very powerful in order to have a proper segmentation for the applications behind self-driving cars, robo, vision, and medical image applications. The next application, automated image captioning applications. What we mean by image captioning applications? There will be one image, and there are different objects. And for example, if I show a particular image to the human being, uh, the image is having the content like that. For example, uh, the cat is chasing the rat. The cat is chasing the rat. That is the view of the image. As a human being, we have human intelligence. We are able to understand, uh, oh, this is the cat, this is the rat, the cat is chasing the rat, and we are able to distinguish two objects separately, and also what type of activity is going on, and based on that, you are able to describe the sentence. But how is it possible for the machine to understand by itself? That means the machine has to understand the image as well as the text. So the, here, the two problems are coming, image analytics and the text analytics. Actually, of course, we are, we are dealing with only image analytics and the image captioning is the problem of dealing with both image and text analytics. And the image analytics will be dealt to by concurrent neural networks. We will be seeing in the subsequent slides, concurrent neural networks. And the text analytics will be described through recurrent neural networks. So what we mean by concurrent neural networks and the recurrent neural networks. Okay. And the fourth application, what I'm showing is fashion recommendation and design. For example, when you are going to place the order for the products, different products with respect to shirt or pant or jeans and all, uh, what you are going to do, and every user uh, may be selecting the required items depending upon their choice. So here the recommendation system is going to be involved. That is a big problem, fashion recommendation and design. Such problems actually we are using in the smart retail sections. And, uh, and these problems can be solved by many approaches. One of the approaches, what I am telling is generative adversarial networks. Generative adversarial networks. This is basically uh, used to generate the samples along with the existing images. Why I have to generate the samples? We will be seeing in the subsequent slides. Again, video activity recognition. Some kind of activity may happen in the video. That some, for example, some game may be happening, some sports may be, sports activity may be carried out, and you have to tell what type of light, we like the image captioning. So video captioning can also be performed, but it's very tough as compared to the image captioning. Again, chatbot development. Why I am telling chatbot development? Because chatbot development is a part of the image captioning. Because by looking at the image, you even the machine is capable of telling the text behind the image after understanding or synthesizing the image. And in industry, with respect to the chatbot development, we use a dialogue flow from the Google and Bidot, uh, AI from the Facebook and Lex. This is the chatbot from the Amazon. Similarly, with respect to recognition, we use the Amazon recognition and uh, Google uh, vision is there. And uh, even you can use the customized uh, vision packages from the lower level also. Similarly, Summarization, video summarization problems also very popular in terms of the legal side or product review in the retail. Just these are the a few uh, problems or use cases or applications you can go in detail by looking at or by selecting any one of the problems. Now, th this is what I explained earlier, image caption. Now you can understand. Different pictures are there. Now, big, uh, below the picture, some sentences are there. Now, when you give that picture to the machine, how the machine is uh, capable of uh, understanding the image and detecting the image, so, so many activities will be carried out. It's not like that immediately the machine is uh, able to do it. It's a very tough problem. It's a challenging application also. Okay. Now, whatever way applications I am telling, now I get into the neural networks, deep neural networks. Because before looking at the CNN, convolutional neural networks, which are capable of uh, solving image analytics problems, first of all, 
the participants uh, should have strong knowledge in uh, designing and developing uh, building and deploying deep neural networks using python and the keras package when you talk about the implementation side you you should know all the package. actually uh, sometimes what people think that i can understand the problem i can analyze the problem i can solve the problem mathematically here many things are required for developing application even for whenever we are recruiting the students for the industry side in terms of ai or data and deep learning implementation is going to play a vital role rather than uh, just understanding so two skill sets are necessary with respect to artificial intelligence side one is mathematical strong knowledge the concerned candidate must have no doubt in that the second one the algorithm understanding the third one the way in which how they are converting that algorithm into the proper implementation in terms of the available packages and normally everybody knows that the data set or the data only you are going to feed into the any kind of algorithm suppose since i am talking about the neural network then every neural network will have input layer hidden layer and output layer you know very well and and also uh, how do you uh, pass the data into the input layer how the data is going to be processed so just like that you cannot uh, pass the entire data set immediately into the input layer and many things are going to happen so after acquiring the data from business point of view after acquiring the data and uh, you have to look at the type of the data whether the any data is missing if the missing data is available how can i remove that and if any unnecessary data is available how to remove that and what kind of features i can select so all those data pre processing data processing steps as well as data exploration steps will have to be done before the data is becoming ready then only you can feed the actual data into the neural network and also for the academic uh, academician side i know that most of the people will be using public data set from the university of california irvin or any available data sets from the public coco data set or cifar data set or image net data set or pascal voc data sets or many data sets are available so what are the, in the from the industry point of view what we will be doing we will be using the public data set but actually uh, how do you think that uh, the industry is using the data set we always we will be using public data set no we will be generating our own data set from the transactional databases actually from the transactional databases even the transactional databases may be corresponding to the banking side or retail side or education side or logistics or insurance or any kind of sector so for our past or 6 years or 5 years what kind of data i am generating and what i mean by the past data what i mean by the present data so data sets the construction of the data set itself is a big problem in the industry first of all you have to understand because for the academician side what they think that i have one data set i apply the algorithm i have the model that's all so the first phase is also very important the second phase modeling is also important the third phase is yet another important you have to deploy the model into the real time environment real time environment in the cloud suppose you are you developed the model you trained the model you tested the model and how do you deploy on to the cpus or gpus in the uh, on premise uh, infrastructure or the private cloud or public cloud i mean that's why the ai or deep learning even even is coincident with the other domains like infrastructure side but our interest is not to look at the infrastructure side only on deep learning okay now i i, I assume that i have a readily available data where i have removed inconsistency every data is pakka and also i have done the correlation between or among all the features okay everything is over i mean data pre processing extraction transformation loading so once i have the readily available data now what i am going to do so rows are going to be called as the samples and features are nothing but the columns you know very well and uh, the way in which how you can train your data because in order to create a model you have to train the data in order to create the model you have to train the data for uh, evaluating the model and again you have to test the data so how do you do that this is the very fundamental neural network I, actually today morning i happened to see the schedule i really appreciate the coordinators they have nicely framed the schedule in such a way that from the lower level to the advanced level because uh, prior to my topic was back propagation it is very very important i think all the participants have consumed one and a half hours behind back propagation 
so that i can start from that level then i can touch upon uh, convolutional neural networks because i have to tell different type of deep neural networks associated with the visual computing side visual computing i already illustrated what are the different problems now it is our responsibility to comprehend uh, different deep neural networks so the first deep neural network may be the convolutional neural network but the, before understanding the convolutional neural network one has to be very strong in disseminating the knowledge of the neural network so the neural network is having the input layer hidden layer of it's a very simple neural network uh, just i consume uh, five minutes so that uh, everyone can recall also i think depending upon the previous session i hope so so the input layer is having three nodes as far as this uh, structure is concerned one two three and hidden layer is having two nodes four five and uh, uh, output layer is having only one node and i have given some values also x1 x2 x3 101 i am passing 101 to the one two three and uh, here I have depicted some values along the weights and the uh, biases. Okay, you can initialize the weights. You can initialize the weights. Let me take a small network, for example, one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. The sub part of the entire network. Uh, the the node one is connected to four, two is connected to four, and three is connected to four. One is connected to four via W one four, W two four, W three four. You are going to initialize the values. That's why I given the values. now i would like to ask one important question uh what actually you are going to do in neural network what is your objective and uh, why back propagation is so important in the neural network and also if you really look at different cnn and rnn in terms of the mathematical derivations and all i think when you go deeply into the research papers derivations will be coming but i am not going to deal with the derivations and all probably professor will be uh, telling those derivations just i show the significant even from the industry side also we look at in that angle okay so first of what you have to do you have you are supposed to compute the input of the uh, let me take the fourth node input of 4 let it be i4 and i want to calculate the o4 how do you calculate i4 anybody else how do you calculate i4 from this diagram suppose i want to compute the weighted i mean input part of this 4 from the previous 1 2 3 how do you calculate audience let it be two way interaction it is it is not necessary that the uh, the talk should be in the one way direction only anybody else is it audible is yes, it audible yes, uh, sir how do you yeah, how do you calculate i4 hello how do you calculate i4 very simple from this diagram there is even in chat box sir hello no no just so, you can speak no problem any one of you w14 ah. at least Sorry. any one of you any i tell you any one of you speak others can listen no problem at least uh, the speaker will be having some interest because i tell you one thing whether it is going to physical interaction or online interaction uh, interaction is a must yeah i4 x1 into w14 plus bias ah. if ah. if we are if want to apply bias okay x1 into a w14 plus x2 into w24 plus x3 into w34 in that way you calculate i4 you know very important again how do you compute the o4 o4 output so what you have to understand some algorithm will be there now some algorithm will be there that algorithm is very important actually one second this is the algorithm you have to understand by yourself okay uh, how do you calculate this uh, o4 i4 this is the i4 summation wij oi plus theta j this bias is coming here here oi equal to 1 by 1 plus e power minus ij so o4 equal to 1 by 1 plus e power minus i4 what is this function 1 by 1 plus e power minus i4 quickly hello this is what the is sigmoid uh oh uh, yeah correct function yeah sigmoid activation function no doubt in the sigmoid activation function 
So what actually you are doing is you are applying some kind of activation function. That is because I tell you the whole uh, deep learning subject is a pakka mathematical oriented. Even the artificial intelligence, mathematical, machine learning, deep learning, uh, your hands should be dirty. Even when the uh, students are entering into our industry, any industry, and first they should be very strong in max. Then only they can implement uh, the algorithms. Immediately they cannot implement the algorithms anything. So what uh, I tell you, you people don't teach anything theoretically. Make them you ask you make the students to solve problems inside the class. This is my suggestion. Okay, one by one plus e power or minus i four. Based on that, the O4 is calculated. So this is the way. If you really look at this algorithm, this is the small uh, information. Let's try to show it to you. Yeah. Now what is happening here? This is i4. Uh, point. This by two. i4 is x1 into w14. One into point to point two plus zero into w24 uh, plus zero. X3 into w34 minus point five plus bias. Bias is theta four minus point four. That's why I'm getting minus point seven. For corresponding this particular node four, I want to know the output node. So O four one by one plus e power minus of minus point seven point three three two. Similarly, you have to calculate for i five O five i six O six. This is nothing but the forward propagation. This is nothing but forward propagation. Once you finish this forward propagation, what you are going to do? You have because you are having some calculated value O six. Final part is here. O six is coming. Okay. So I cannot solve the problems now, but at the same time I can explain. Now O six is coming. This is the actual computed value, but uh, I have I am expecting some value. Always expected value will be there. They assume that the expected value is one. By my actual value after uh, calculating, okay, uh, through the forward propagation up to O six six. I assume that point eight. So there is a difference between actual output and the predicted output. Predicted output is one. The actual output is point seven. You have to find the difference. What is the name? What is the name of the difference? We Loss use some function. Term. No, no, no. We use some term. The difference between the actual output and desired output. What is that? Hello. What is the difference between? The actual output and the expect the desired output, expected output and actual output. Error. Error. Difference. Difference. Error. Please understand. Uh, <laughs> unless otherwise, because even the subsequent slides, I will be explaining certain concepts of science, some diagram, some mathematical formula. But uh, I tell you, uh, the entire targeted audience, please first start understanding the complete neural networks. Uh, the popular uh, textbook is the neural networks by which is the popular uh, textbook for neural networks which has been existing for 25 years in academics anybody else because everybody is uh, concentrating on deep learning presently fine just i ask this question what is the popular textbook for neural networks many textbooks are the very popular textbook simon hakins please this is the very bible from the stanford Stanford University or University of California Berkeley or IIT or NIT, any Simon Hawkins is a very good uh, one of the very good books for the neural networks. So that foundation, first of all, you are supposed to have to get into the further deep learning, deep neural networks like conventional neural networks or deep adversarial networks or deep auto encoders or deep reinforcement learning or deep uh, recurrent neural networks, any neural networks. That's why just I consume just five minutes with respect to the fundamental concepts. That please Simon Akins, you please study. It's a very good book, thousand pages book where you will be having complete fundamentals from the neural networks. So now you know the error. But the error must be zero. Now the error must be zero. But that is a difference. In order to reduce the error, what actually you are going to do? Hello. In order to reduce the error, what you are going to do? You are going to propagate. You are you are going to travel backwards from the sixth node to the uh, input layer via the hidden layer. That is the concept. Okay. So in order to reduce the error, what you are supposed to do? What is the objective of the back propagation? 
Anybody else? Please respond. I tell you, even though I am the CTO or director of the my company, when I am going to attend any training program, I will act as a sincere student. This is very important. Okay, just any one of the uh, participant, just in order to reduce the error. Uh, what actually you doing in the back propagation? Uh, you are going derivation. Derivation. Like, what propagation. you are going to do in the back propagation? Derivation of loss. Okay. Changing Not weights and bias. No, 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 no. You, uh, I think you are telling take a key term separately without proper understanding. Now I have computed, I have calculated O6. I already explained I4, I5, I4, O4, I5, O5, I6, O6. Assume that I have the O6 is 0.3. My aim is the error should be reduced to zero so that my prediction is perfect. That is the idea. In order to reduce this error, what I am going to do in the back propagation neural network? What I am doing? You are you are you are supposed to update what what values you are updating weight values as well as bias so weight updation and bias updation will be taken place actually if uh, if you are going to solve the fundamental neural network it will take uh, at least a minimum one and a half two hours two hours manually uh, and also if the problem even the problem may be very small for uh, but you have to do many iterations manually then you have a strong idea that's what i am telling you Okay, anyhow, uh, so it is assumed that uh, in order to reduce the error, you are supposed to update the weights as well as biases so, so that you are uh, back propagating from the sixth node to the first node and second node, third node via all these things. Again, the iterations will be taken place. So in this concept only, in order to construct the network, what are the things you have considered? One is size of the network. Uh, hidden input layer, number of hidden layers, and output layer. The second part is activation layer, activation function. Yeah, because here you are using one activation function. We already discussed one by one plus e power minus sigma. The third part is learning rate. Learning rate is very important because uh, there will be one parameter called learning rate, which will be specified between zero and one, as per the algorithm itself. Zero and one. That value should be changed. These are the three parameters which are very important for constructing the network. But when you are going to train the network, some other parameters will also be involved. So that's why I start with the again. I am going to show the big uh, illustration of this x1, x2, x3. I am doing the summation along with the bias. I have the okay one by one plus e power minus theta x. This is the uh, okay activation function, sigmoid activation function. Then assume that the values are going to pass from layer 1, layer 2, layer 3 and feed forward network. Again, this one hot vector or word embedding, this is with respect to the pre-processing part. Weighted sum of input you are going to do in the input function. Activation function we already discussed. Sigmoid is nothing but the non-linear function. And again, the derivation will be going like this. For each and every uh, hidden layer only, I have written A12, A23, A3. It's very simple actually. Okay. Uh, don't get confused and uh, again feed forward uh, steps are going to be taken and forward propagation actually simple forward propagation only i have shown through an example one two three uh, one two three four five six this is the generalization okay and now what is happening in order to reduce the error only you are computing the gradient okay gradient and uh, because this is the derivative of the error derivative of the error and uh, where the differential calculus that you have to understand why i am doing dui by dx dui by dx the change uh, what uh, how the differential calculus is going to be helpful for computing the gradient in order to reduce the error why you are computing gradient because to reduce the error and also uh, you have to update the weights and biases automatically as such assume that now you know the network Again, just uh, one second, uh, that uh, particular algorithm, I finish it out so that you can understand. Now, up to this, this part, you know, uh, propagate the error. You are propagating the error for each unit J in the output layer. From the output layer to the hidden layer, you are calculating like this. For this, you have one derivation. Again, from the hidden layer to the input layer, one error unit is coming. Okay. So, you, you have to compute the error at the each and every unit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's what we are doing. Again, the weight is going to be updated. When you are going to look at the weight updation, this is very important. This concept is called as a learning uh, uh, updation part, weight updation, bias updation. 
this is a new wij equal to old wij plus change in wij change in wij is nothing but l int l is what is this l what is this l i already told in my session itself what is this l learning rate uh, learning rate then error error the previous error then oi that a place you do all such calculations for each bias similarly bias updation so 21 steps are available and you have to do such a calculation actually it's available in uh, one of the textbook data mining textbook uh, you have to do like this unless you understand all these things how uh, weight w46 w56 w14 or this is with respect to one iteration that please try to understand this manually again second iteration third i think uh, it may take five or six iteration to finish this simple problem once you have a clear idea behind it then you can develop you can set up or you can build any neural network now assume that i have built the neural network but i want to uh, tune the hyperparameter this is with respect to the experimentation part so initially you are assi assigning the weights how what are the possibilities by which you can assign the weights you can initialize the weights uh, randomly you can select any one of the activation function i mean sigmoid activation function i told and also the optimization algorithms are coming optimization algorithms is nothing but the the gradient descent algorithm that's what i told computing gradient please you recall the gradient part is the optimization algorithm again regularization where the regularization is going to be used anybody else have you ever come across this term regularization just one second regularization okay regularization is a concept which is used for uh, preventing the overfitting problem when you are going to deal with the experimentation of the deep neural network there is a problem called overfitting what we mean by overfitting uh, overfitting is nothing but suppose you have the data set it is having 10000 images so 80000 images are you are divided into training 20000 images you allocated for the testing and uh, with respect to the training you have created one model with respect to the uh, creating the model uh, fine it has been trained well but uh, when you go for the testing side it has not performed well so with respect to the training when the model is performing well with respect to the testing when the model is not performing well some problems are occurring those problems we call it as the overfitting and i can avoid overfitting through regularization okay again learning rate in the parameter setting you set between 0 to 1 Initial, suppose for example i said the learning rate is 0.6 you look at the problem whether the error is going to be reduced uh, whether i am able to predict properly so you can schedule the learning rate so in the deeper uh, for example if you want to publish a paper in ieee transactions acm transactions and all they will look at with respect to the experimental part in detail with respect to five uh, seven or eight pages actually learning rate scheduling and you are supposed to change the learning rate in between 0 to 1 you have to say, write one function for learning rate scheduling separately just i uh, mentioned all these functions again with respect to each and every function the what are the what are the procedure what are the methods by which you can initialize the weights in the beginning please uh, you recall again whatever i say i hope everyone will be able to understand in that way only i am moving uh, again i take that network the simple network 1 2 3 4 5 6 you keep it in your mind and 1 to 4 w 1 4 2 to 4 w 2 4 uh, 3 to 4 w 3 4 so what are the ways by which you can assign the weights i can randomize the weights uh, in order to initialize the weights i can use the statistical distribution from the normal distribution or uniform distribution and similarly with respect to activation function now i ask one question first initially we applied it's a sigmoid activation function 1 by 1 plus e power minus x for calculating particular neuron okay output of the neuron but uh, do you, do we have only one activation function no that's why i am telling it's a very big subject and we have uh, the tanh activation function relu activation function leaky relu activation function elu activation function every activation function is how some having some mathematical formula for example in the design of the neural network you can change the sigmoid function by any one of the remaining activation functions in the experiment part that's what i am telling you similarly with respect to the optimization algorithm for example uh, in the traditional neural network you are using stochastic gradient descent but there is a possibility for us to use momentum ada grad ada delta rms prop adam but adam is the best uh, gradient uh, best optimizer for reducing the error so you have to understand each and every optimization algorithm mathematically but uh, i i happen to show one algorithm in that algorithm actually i am using stochastic gradient descent only not the adam 
but if you are going to change that particular part stochastic gradient descent by momentum mada grade adar delta rms prop adam even there will be different kind of effect that's what i am telling just i am giving lot of ideas you capture these ideas then you have to do uh, and analyze and develop the problem solutions for the research problems again stochastic gradient descent the formula is like this average loss how do you calculate the loss here uh, l is the learning rate and the lambda is the penalization factor similarly i already said that l1 regularization l2 regularization which is used to avoid the uh, overfitting i already said that uh, said what is the meaning of the overfitting anybody else can you repeat what is the use of overfit uh, i mean what is the use of regularization because anyone is keen in uh, watching the entire uh, speech reduce uh, overfitting uh, what is the use of uh, overfitting yeah very good very good really appreciate overfitting uh, problem yeah overfitting it is used for preventing the overfitting when the, when the overfitting problem will occur i have already given the answer please look at uh, please listen to my talk seriously then you will be able to give the answer for my talk itself what is uh, when what is the difference between overfitting and underfitting underfitting i did overfitting the opposite of overfitting is underfitting overfitting i already given one answer what is, can you repeat overfitting is uh, greater than the training error yeah very good when the model is performing I, actually the, you have to understand like this for example in your college uh, there are certain set of students Uh, there is a internal test and the university examination i mean external examination whenever the certain students will be doing test internal test seriously because internal test normally some teachers may be giving some questions and all some they may help based on that they will get more marks but when for the external examination university examination they may not be able to understand anything they may not be able to collect any information from any teacher because someone is presenting the question paper so real uh, knowledge is real uh evaluation is going to be taken place in the test only so external testing so in the external testing when the model is uh, poorly performing means what overfit that's what i mean just you understand always you try to understand any kind of complicated problems with the day to day life scenarios in that way only experienced professors will be able to give examples okay fine i hope everyone will be able to follow similarly <clears throat> in the stochastic gradient descent everything please you have to solve uh, from here this is the weight update this is the weight update formula weight update formula the way in which how we are updating the weight of course this uh, derivation this formula you happen to see in that with the algorithm what i was showing earlier uh, similarly there are different types of regularization l1 l2 overfitting underfitting underfitting is the opposite okay it will not be performing in both the training and testing learning rate you can set as a low learning rate high learning rate and optimal learning rate now we get into the cnn now assume that you know neural network now i want to get in the convolutional neural network for image analytics using tensor flow when you are talk about the python packages you have tensor flow and keras and the pytorch uh, who the, who invented pytorch from which company pytorch which company is using pytorch package which company is using pytorch i mean from which company the we have got pytorch open source packages facebook actually so now there is a big competition between the google and the facebook in terms of the deep learning even of, of course amazon amazon is also using deep learning library as mxnet you just mixnet mixnet m x n e t i think whatever i say keras tensorflow pytorch mxnet have been heavily used in industries for the past 6 uh, to 8 years practically okay now my idea is to construct the cnn in terms of convolutional neural network what you have to understand cnn is used for pre processing please that you keep it in mind not for classification if for any modeling if for any data science or machine learning or deep learning problems there are three things involved one is the first phase is pre processing the second phase is modeling the third phase is uh, deployment in the modeling you have training and testing the third one is deployment of course visualization will also be taken place so cnn is used for feature learning not for classification feature learning okay in the context of cnn you have three different layers convolutional layer subsampling layer fully connected layer you understand like this convolutional layer subsampling layer is nothing but the pooling layer another term for the subsampling is pooling layer so convolutional layer pooling layer fully connected layer let me explain one after another so how do you construct the convolutional neural network for example i want to develop the application for 
digit recognition problem. The popular data set is MNS IST. MNS IST. Now I want to recognize the digit ASAA properly through CNN. So I do different operation. The image, the size of the A is 32 cross 32. Cross, uh, if I put 1 means uh, I'm using only grayscale. If I put 32 cross 32 cross 3 means uh, RGB, RGB image with respect to the filters I'm saying. So convolution, then pooling, convolution, pooling, then fully connected like that the problem goes. Now you have to understand what is the meaning of the convolution very clearly. Convolution is nothing but it's very simple and this concept I'm taking for the image processing. When you talk about the image processing, you take one image, you can enhance the image, you can uh, uh, concatenate two images, you can filter the images, you can compress the image. So a lot of image processing applications, again from the traditional image processing textbook, separately thousand page book, you have to be very strong. Then I apply one filter, the filter will be multiplied with the particular image, okay, uh, Sobel filter and uh, so many filters are available image filtering okay these filters now i apply some filter over with respect to the particular image because of that some reduction is going to happen some reduction is going to happen uh, how the reduction is going to happen we will look at it that's we call it as a even edge reduction edge reduction uh, you know from the histogram edge reduction line reduction uh, how do you do the circle reduction there are many traditional image processing algorithms are also available now let us see uh, what is the difference between convolution and the pooling. Subsampling, another term for the subsampling is pooling. Another term for the subsampling is pooling. Uh, fully connected layer is the traditional neural network layer. Fully connected layer is the traditional neural network layer. So what you have to understand, when I bring deep learning concepts, first I bring only two concepts very newly. One is convolution. Another one is pooling, then convolution pooling. I can apply one after another. Final layer is fully connected layer. After that, only you are applying the classifier. Because the whole CNN is meant for feature uh, pre -pro feature learning only. Feature learning, I mean pre processing. The last phase is classification where you can apply SVM, support vector machine. Of course, or softmax classifier, you can apply input layer, hidden layer, output layer. <coughs> With respect to the architecture side, you have different CNN architectures. One is Lenet architecture. Lenet architecture is a very popular. It's a, it was uh, developed in 1998. After the 2012, we have the architecture called AlexNet, then GoogleNet, then ResNet, then MobileNet, uh, then UNet. Like that, a lot of architecture you have to study separately. What kind of differences you will be able to see among these backbone architectures? Normally, we call it the backbone architecture. Let us first consider on the Lenet architecture, convolutional unit, Lenet architecture, first convolution, then even in the pooling, I have two different concepts, max pooling and the average pooling, we will see one example, but convolution, max pooling only are going to be new for you, I mean new for the people who are not aware of the deep learning, but the other things are uh, known to everyone, activation function from the fundamental neural networks, flattening, you are going to convert in the multi-dimensional into the, I mean, multiple layers into different, single layer of different dimension. Again, TANH, another activation function, power propagation, usual power propagation, softmax. What is this softmax? Anybody else? I already given answer when I was uh, describing my CNN architecture. What is this softmax? Where do you use softmax? While well, you are going to construct your CNN architecture. Softmax is going to act as a classifier. Softmax is going to act as a classifier. You can remember like this for the time being. The, again, uh, with respect to the softmax, I have some probability values that you have to do some computation and uh, you have to deal with the loss function, cost function uh, with respect to the CNN, likelihood, negative log likelihood, and there are certain parameters. Now, these are the hyperparameter tuning, experimental part with respect to deep CNN that we will see later. Now you will get confused. I show you some examples of CNN, then I get into the image captioning part. One minute. So, what I told you earlier, CNN and RNN. So what you have to understand, suppose for example, I take one cat image, 64 cross 64 cross 3. 
you calculate the pixels 12288 this is the cat zero or one this problem is called as classification problem but if i am going to increase the size of the image 64 to 1000 uh, 64 to 1000 in terms of the width and uh, height 1000 cross 1000 cross 3 it becomes 3 million so what is the difference so please understand depending upon the size of the image also your neural network uh, will be varying when the size of the image is going to be small you can use the minimal network but the, when the size of the image is going to be large accordingly you you need 3 million pixel means actually how do you pass the, this particular cat image, 1000 cross 1000 cross 3, 3 million pixels you are passing to the input layer means 3 million nodes, 3 million units for the particular input layer are you able to follow. Then you construct the network, you decide how you are going to set up the hidden, uh, hidden layer, again output layer. In the output layer, my objective is 1000 nodes I have. Once again, I repeat, first when I was starting the session, I was showing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in that case, input layer had three nodes. Output layer had only one node. Now what happens? Input layer is having 3 million nodes. Output layer is having 1000 nodes. This is the interpretation behind this small example. Now edge reduction, just let me explain only convolution operation. Because CNN, then only you can understand. For example, I am uh, taking the data set where I look at one particular image of 6 cross 6. This is, these are the values, 6 cross 6. One particular uh, image. The pixel values I have represented. This is the convolution. Convolution is 3 cross 3. So what I am going to do, I have to multiply this convolution with respect to this particular image. For example, this is x, this is w. I multiply w into x. How do I multiply? I am not following the traditional matrix multiplication. I am following the vector dot multiplication. Vector dot multiplication means with respect to the position. For example, I take the first row from the convolution. I take the first row from the 6 plus 6. And also, depending upon the size of the convolution only, I take this sample, this sub matrix. So from the 6 plus 6, I take the sub matrix is 3 cross 3. Exactly, I multiply now 3 into 1 plus 0 into 1, 0 into 0 plus 1 into minus 1. I may be having some value again plus 1 into 1 plus 5 into 0, plus 8 into minus 1, plus 2 into 1, 7 into 0, plus 2 into minus 1. Like that, I am multiplying this value I am putting here. First two cell. Are you able to follow? Similarly, you have to move. Next time, what you are doing, this particular uh, sub matrix, I am considering from the second column. That means 0, 1, 2, 5, 8, 9, 7, 2, 5. So, 0, 1, 2, 5, 8, 9, 7, 2, 5. This sub matrix I am considering. I am multiplying with the same convolution. I have the second value is minus 4. Like this, I may be having some other intermediate value whose size is 4 cross 4. Now, what you have to understand, I have the image of 6 cross 6. I have the convolution filter of 3 cross 6, 3 cross 3. When I multiply these two, I have 4 cross 4. Do I have any generalization? Do I have any generalization? Yes, you have generalization. Because generalization is also important. What is the meaning generalization? If I have, for example, I have 6 cross 6. This is, let it be n cross n. This is filter 3 cross 3, f cross f. If it is going to be like this, I may be having the intermediate 4 cross 4. How do I get? I am having, I am, I am deriving such sub matrix through the generalization n minus f plus 1. So if the image is of n cross n and the filter is of f cross f, definitely I must it have n minus f plus 1 into n minus f plus 1. You apply 6 here 3. So 6 minus 3 plus 1, 4. Again 6 minus 3 plus 1. So 4 into 4. Are you able to follow? So this is the way the convolution is going to be done. And not only I am doing this operation, again so some more techniques are going to be used. So the whole formula what is going to another uh, technique what i am going to do is strided convolution now you understood convolution strided convolution means uh, earlier what i was using is stride equal to one that means uh, how do you move the how do you consider the sub matrix from the given image in the previous case uh, with respect to the column one two three i selected second time two three four i selected 
when i say stride equal to 2 very simple i will be jumping from first column to the third column that's all i will be moving from first column to the third column so first i take the 2 3 7 6 6 9 3 4 8 second time which sub matrix i'll be taking will you be able to make a guess when i say stride equal to 2 anybody else First time I may be taking 2, 3, 7, 6, 6, 9, 3, 4, 8 with respect to the filter size, 3 cross 3. Second time, when I say stride equal to 2, will I be considering 3, 7, 4, 6, 9, 8, 4, 8, 3 or 7, 4, 6, 9, 8, 7, 8, 3, 8? Which one is appropriate? Audience, which one is appropriate? Striding equal to 2. I will be more, I will be selecting the sub matrix from the 746. Ah, third column, 746. 746. Okay, that's all. That's 746, 987, This is simple. Similarly, you have to calculate. Because sometimes what happens, the minute details, if you understand only, you can ask your students to write the program also. That is very deep. I, I tell you, deep learning is not so simpler. Sometimes people are thinking that the readily available code is available in the internet. I can uh, copy the code. I can run the code. No, no, no. Finally, when the students are getting in the industry, they are not able to get into the company because of the fundamentals. Because we will be asking to this level. We will, then what I will be telling, I give you some input layer, hidden layer, output layer. I specify all the parameters. Now you write a program. We are not able to write. So don't. And also I, at this juncture, I give one uh, small suggestion to the probably uh, some faculty members don't give the code to any student that is a bad habit actually you should not give code to any student code change so code exchange is prohibited in industry actually this is a very important concept i like i wanted to tell in this uh, ftp program you should you can show a small piece of the code but don't give the code for the laboratory they should develop the code by themselves then only they will be able to understand any kind of web application or mobile application even data science or deep learning application. okay fine now we come to the part uh, how do you do the convolution and not only and again padding not now stride we discussed another important concept is padding uh, in the normal context padding will be zero normal context padding will be zero when the padding will become one whenever you want to make the size of the output matrix that can be equal to the size of the input matrix, then you change padding. So that in that way, presently you can understand, but oh, padding is also there. So the generalization becomes n plus 2p minus f by s plus 1 multiplied by n plus 2p minus f by s plus 1. So earlier I told n minus f plus 1. Apart from this filter f, striding comes, padding comes. This is the way you develop the con net. You note down con net convolution network small con i mean uh, convolution operation okay small convolution operation now you may be thinking we are from the industry why we are calculating like this we have to calculate no other go otherwise how can i write my program uh, from the scratch level do by doing customization it's very difficult okay now what happened convolution over volumes just uh, i go ahead this is 6 into 6 into 3, here 27, 3 into 3 into, this is the filter. But uh, this 3, why I, so far I brought only two numbers. Why I am bringing the third number for the color image. Now I am bringing the color image. This one more concept is the color image. So 6 into 6 into 3 and 3 into 3 into 3. This is the filter and this is for the numbers. Okay. Similarly, the concept will be moving. Now I would like to tell another concept. Multiple filters I can use. So far, I used one filter multiplied by one input image. Now, what I am going to do, I take two filters. For example, 3 into 3 into 3, one filter. Another filter, 3 into 3 into 3. I am multiplying these two filters with respect to one image. What is the need for that? So, when I, in, when I increase the number of filters only, the size of the image can be reduced, can be reduced in the sensor. I am doing the feature learning without affecting the originality. So, that what is happening 6 into you please understand the number 6 into 6 into 3 now 3 into 3 into 3 i have, i take two filters please understand two filters number of filters is going to be two and one path is going to be like this 4 into 4 another path is going to be i already given this explanation how you got it n plus uh, 2p minus f by s plus 1 again while you are going to amalgamating these two you are getting the last two so what is the interpretation of this two can you make a guess 
what is the interpretation of this truth? 4 into 4 into 2, how do I get? How do I put this 2? Why I am not putting 3? Anybody else? What is the interpretation of this 2? 4 into 4 into 2. This 2 specifies number of filters. Number of filters. Suppose if I increase 4 filters, 4 times, this value will be 4 into 4 into 4. This fundamental is very, very important for constructing the convolutional neural network from the scratch. Because what Stanford University or University of California, Berkeley professors or Google big companies are telling, even though students should be aware of the existing packages like Keras, TensorFlow and PyTorch for the bigger application, always they should develop any application from the scratch using NumPy. That is a concept called NumPy, multidimensional layer uh, array. The using NumPy only, they have to develop. That will, that will be the first exercise when uh, they are going to teach image classification from the Stanford University level. That's why I'm showing all these portions. Because the research perspective, you have to give in that way. So the innovation may happen even with respect to some other level. Like that, the concept moves. A lot of things are there. It's not so simple. Again, one layer of a CNN. Now I want to construct one layer because uh, only if I explain only one layer, at least I'll be happy. Others will be able to uh, have some strong foundation. After that, I can show different different diagrams. I can go ahead and uh, just application. Now again, I take six plus six plus three. Now two filters I'm having here. <coughs> when you are going to apply one layer, actually the concept is going to be like this. This is the filter. Two filters I'm using. This is the image. After, after multiplying, actually you are uh, applying the activation function. You are applying the activation function. Here only your neural network comes. Here only your neural network comes. Earlier, uh, please understand. Earlier, I was just doing convolution. But the resultant of the convolution, that means the traditional neural network only they are following. But this part, ReLU, ReLU is activation function plus bias. So here they are mixing this. Uh, activation function from the neural network along with the image processing, they are developing the con net sub part of the con net with respect to the convolutional neural network. Like that, the subject moves. Suppose I ask one question number of parameters in one layer. If you have 10 filters that are 3 into 3 into 3 in one layer of your neural network, how many parameters does that layer have? Definitely 3 into 3 into 3, 27 parameters plus bias, 28 parameters. Totally, we have 280 parameters for 10 filters. And finally, now I want to develop simple CNN. So once I develop simple CNN, then I can go ahead with respect to other concepts quickly. Uh, please remember this simple CNN, this is a coordinate. Now I increase the size, 39 cross 39 cross 3. This 3 is meant for RGB. Now I am not, uh, just I am writing 10 filters. That's all. I am specifying 10 filters. F equal to 3, 3. That means the assumption is 3 cross 3, 3 cross 3. Uh, S is equal to 1, stride equal to 1, P equal to 0. Now, uh, how do I got 37 into 37? That you have to understand. So next intermediate output, how do I got? You apply this formula only actually. N plus 2P minus F by S plus 1. N is 39. P is 0. And F is 10 actually. 10 filters I am using. Okay. Uh, by Divided by S. Divided by S is 1. You calculate all these things. 39 plus 2 into P. 2 minus uh, what is this f equal to 3 sorry this is a filter size this is a filter size uh, this f only you have to put not 10 filters f, f equal to 3 so 39 minus 3 36 uh, divided by s yes. 36 by 1 36 plus 1 37 so 37 into 37 into 10 i have put from where i have put this 10 based on this 10 filters so this part Please understand. Once you are very clear in understanding, now I can go the, go to the PPT quickly. Now you can understand. So why I am doing like this? Suppose uh, I would like to illustrate the image captioning application along with the CNN and RNN. I will show the different architecture so that you can understand. This is the CNN part. Now I, let me explain. The CNN, we have different architecture. Linet, Linet as I said earlier, Linet, AlexNet, uh, ResNet, GoogleNet, and the ImageNet and all these things. If you look at this algorithm, what is happening, this is the VGG net for visual recognition. And uh, please study this paper, very deep conventional network for large scale visual recognition. This is the image, 224 class 224 class 3. 
what I am doing, con64 I am developing. This con64, just as they put one block, but in between these, whatever calculation so far I explained is embedded. That's what, that you have to understand. This is very important. In between this image, then con64, n plus 2p minus f by s plus 1. So I have to understand filter size. I have to understand number of filters and sliding and padding. I have to specify. Then the intermediate value I'll be getting. Again, 2 con4 and max pooling. Pooling I will explain. Again, convolution, max pooling, convolution. So I'm increasing this convolution 64. What is the 64? Filters, 64 filters, 120 filters, 256 filters. Again, 5 to 1 and max pooling. Again, there are many things you have to experiment. Uh, when I, when I start increasing the filters what will happen when i start decreasing the filters what will happen you have to study and enjoy by yourself okay so for the time being just i am using two convolution max pooling two convolution max pooling and finally this is the fully connected layer what is the softmax classifier this is a big architecture this architecture i call it as a vgg net simply you understand like this image convolution pooling convolution pooling convolution pooling convolution pooling four times is coming again convolution five times fully connected layer fully connected layer is a traditional neural network then softmax this is a classifier so the way in which how the image the given image of 224 to class 3 has been reduced to the final layer of thousand units in the big architecture so you have to study this paper you have to experiment you have to develop the program you should ask your students to experiment you have to change the different hyper tuning parameters then only you will be having strong knowledge with respect to deep neural networks this is what i'm telling convolution pooling fully connected then con net i already said 3d volume the image the way in which how the depth and height uh, height is going to be considered how do i evaluate the con net and fully connected layer this part I mean, after this max pooling, 7 cross 7 cross 5 to 1, how I am reducing to the fully connected layer 1 cross 1 cross 4096 neurons. So, this is the way I am going. So, different convolutional layer I am using. So, if you look at this problem, now you can understand what is the size of the image 224 cross 224 cross 3. What is the size of the filter? Now, how many filters I am using? 64 filters and 224 cross 224. So how many filters I am using, how do I do everything, you have to set up the parameters by yourself. This is the very simple concept of the pooling. Pooling layer you are going to use in the second next construction. Let me explain very simply. This is we call it as a down sampling. 224 cross 224 to 112 cross to 112. How do I do? Whenever I talk about max pooling, please remember this. This is a 4 cross 4. 4 cross 4 image. I am uh, okay reducing. Okay, this uh, the image of 4 cross 4 is reduced to the image of 2 cross 2. How? Very simple. You divide it into four portions. The first sub portion, you take the maximum value. That's all. 1, 1, 1, 5, 6. I am taking maximum is 6. Again, 2, 4, 7, 8. I am taking the maximum value. I am taking the maximum value of 4 cell. This is what I call it as a max pooling. Like this, the average pooling is there. So you have to apply the sequence of uh, convolution and pooling one after another. This is the way the features are going to be learned from the low level to the mid level, high level, and trainable. And again, you will be able to identify different features in terms of the dots and line and edge. Again, the complete picture this is what really happening. So whenever I am going to give a set of images from for example, track the car, template, ship, or these images I am having from the CIFAR or ImageNet, I am going to pass it to the ConNet architecture. The architecture may be using VGGNet or ResNet, and it will follow this architecture only. And finally, it is able capable of classifying the images. So image classification experiment, you have to do like this. And final softmax is the classifier. And this is the way you are going to do. So finally, what do you do? You take a training data set for simplicity. You divide the training set into different uh, batches. Each batch will be having a sufficient images forwarded to the network to get predictions. Backpropagate the errors. You know, why you are going to backpropagate the errors? Because uh, you are not uh, the expected output and actual output is not going to the same. So errors you are having, you know, to reduce the error. Again, you have to update the weights. Again, you do the iterative process. So this is what in that direction only CNN you are going to do. RNN, uh, actually, it is going to be dealt with the text analytics part. And uh, what we are going to do from the content, the way in which how the text is going to be analyzed, that way it's doing. So you are going to generate the sequence. Again, the concept is called as a recurrent uh, neural network. 
and uh, why recurrent neural networks are important at modeling sequences for example everybody knows suppose you are going to type the particular sentence cat sat on a mat in the google search so accordingly you may happen to see the corresponding sentences how these sentences are coming if you are asking this question towards the public they will be telling that everything is coming from the google server but it's not not happening like that behind this uh, particular uh, concept uh, we have a technology called recurrent neural network technology so recurrent neural network technology are good at modeling sequences so like that uh, the recurrent neural networks are capable of converting uh, one language to another machine translation it's a power of machine translation now we're just i'm touching upon text analytics because the application which you consider is the image caption okay and how do you train the language model suppose i want to train the language model the image is going to be like this cat sat on a mat so from the image i'm doing the probability the probability of the next word is given the previous words so probability of the cat this is the start marker next to word given start marker comma previous sentence cat first sentence third word given start marker first word second word fourth word again this is the conditional probability start marker first word second word third word that that you are going to deal with the probability modeling for the time being you understand like this even lot of illustrations are there and again you set up the you develop the rnn architecture in terms of the x not h not o not the way in which how you pass this uh, information for example this is the x not h not o not this is first layer second layer third layer fourth layer fifth layer so what is really happening when well, you are going to train the language model for the image captioning application only i am talking probability of the next word given the previous words o not h not x not first initially what is happening the cat you are passing this output of the first layer the output of the first layer is going to be fed as the input of the second layer for the next x1 that's why this uh, cat is coming over here second time uh, sat is coming over here from the second layer the process is repeated third time again uh, on is coming again mat is coming this kind of network we call it as a recurrent neural network which will be applied to the timing sequences okay so there will be a start marker and the end marker and exactly the any machine is capable of Uh, predicting or captioning the text from the particular image in that way you can combine both cnn and rnn together okay Th this is what happening now earlier i happened to show the image this is the image okay and the image is passed on to the image you the entire image undergoes the different processes of the convolution max pooling convolution max pooling convolution max pooling finally fully connected layer this is the classifier then this output is going to be passed on to the next layer recurrent neural network again uh, earlier we happened to see cat sat on the mat now the sentence is different straw hat straw hat the same thing start marker straw hat so continuously you are having since you have two words i am having three layers in terms of x not h not o not x1 h1 o1 h2 h2 o2 please you do the computation then you will be happy and what is the advantage of this thing the only thing in the traditional uh, neural network you can only feed input towards the input layer but here the difference is you can feed the input towards the hidden layer also input can be fed to input layer as well as hidden layer that is the difference between recurrent neural network and the normal neural network like this you are going to do finally you build the image captioning application you write a program and develop the application and deploy the application in the cloud and this, this instead of rnn also you can use lstm models which is also capable of uh, dealing with the ca image captioning so in that way uh, you are going to deal with a complete image captioning using the combination of both the cnn and rnn and uh, different parameters also you can change as you think the next concept is transfer learning what is the idea of the transfer learning it is not necessary that you have to use uh, your own architecture you can make use of the default architecture immediately for example i am taking weights pre trained from the image net i am applied onto the this neural network are you able to understand either you can develop customized neural network by yourself from the scratch or you can directly invoke backbone networks such as lenet alexnet uh, google net resnet v1 v2 v3 mobile net inception network all these things onto the 
uh, architecture, then you can apply RNN. In that way, image captioning application is going to be developed. The final topic is deep generative models. Why I am going to use the deep generative models for the visual computing side? Especially here, there are two things. For example, uh, I have different kind of problems. For that problem, I have training data set. The training data set, if you look at the image, the images may be of the lower scale or higher scale. That is one thing. Another thing, I may not be having the sufficient number of images for my problem. In that case, how do you generate the images? So how do you generate the images by yourself? It should be equivalent to, it should be similar to the actual images. That is a concept. Once I repeat, for my problem, I need the big data, big training data set. But I have the small training data set. But in small, for example, the training set data set is having 10,000 images. But I need 1 lakh images. So 90,000 images I have to create by myself. So 90,000 images I can create from the sample of the 10,000 images by using the generative models. So that way, generator network try to fool the description. There, first we start with the auto encoder. Auto encoder, using auto encoder, you can generate the uh, images from the given sample. And that auto encoder can be dealt using, there are two different approaches, uh, encoder and the decoder. And the encoder is capable of converting or uh, uh, what I say, translating or transforming the image into Latin representation. Again, the Latin representation minimized the number of uh, features that can be enhanced to the original size. That is the way auto generator will happen. But uh, generative models is also used for generating the images. But the challenges are going to happen between generator network and discriminator network. Let me explain very clearly. Discriminator the generator is used to create the real looking images by adding some noise to the original image. Discriminator networks is used to distinguish between the real and the fake images. Real and the fake images. This is some kind of problems. And also there I use the minimax objective function at the same gradient descent or ascent. Actually, why I am using ascent? Because of the maximization. Descent I may be using for the minimization. Again, some you have to okay do some kind of research with respect to gradient ascent on discriminator, gradient descent on uh, generator with a different objective. So when you are going to look at the generative adversarial networks, what happened? I am generate. Once I repeat, you are generating one image uh, by adding random noise. This is not the real image. This is the uh, fake image. The fake image you are going to pass it to the discriminative model. The discriminate the role of the discriminative model is to uh, distinguish the real image from the fake image. In that way, that you are dealing with the generative adversarial networks. This is the real image. This is the real world. And uh, th the responsibility of the discriminator is to distinguish the real image from the fake image. So what is really going to happen? The generative model is going to generate different sample each time when it is going to run. And the noise is going to be added. That I call it as a G of Z because X is the image and G is the noise I am adding. Okay. And uh, it may be having I dimensionality like the generative model. But uh, when I am going to have the discriminative model, it is going to distinguish the real image from the fake image. Fake image, real image from the fake image. This is the concept. But what kind of training procedure I am following for the generative adversarial networks? G tries to fool D. That means generator image, generator model tries to fool the discriminator in such a way that the discriminator will not be able to distinguish which is a real image, which is fake image. In that way, generator has to be sound enough. And D, so there is the trade-off. There is the war between the generator and the discriminator. So the models are trained simultaneously. As G gets better, D is a more challenging task. As D gets better, G is a more challenging task. What is the interpretation? When generator is going to be better, D will not be able to distinguish properly. When the D is able to distinguish properly, accordingly, G has to do uh, again more functions. D has to do functioning very well. So that, that's what I am trying to do. So the training procedure, you have to look at the algorithm and you have to implement such GANs actually in the real-time world, in the industry, we are using the fashion recommendation and design. Initially, when I was telling the use case, I told. So the fashion recommendation and design with respect to the recommendation part, how the user is going to give the score for the particular product based on the choice, we are doing this GANs process. And then cycle GAN is there. Cycle GAN is very simple. Uh, I may be having the images of the horses and uh, I can translate the images of the horses to the images of the zebras. So where I use the image augmentation techniques, image augmentation is basically used for 
avoiding overfitting and the way in which our add the image you can resize the image 286 to 256 plus 256 i can flip the image i can rotate the image i can move from the left to right and all these things are going to happen here there are two generators one is for generator uh, two generators and two discriminators i am going to use for the cycle gan for the translation from the images of the horses to the images of the zebras how I am doing, these are the examples. Suppose this is the zebra, this is the horse. I can move from the zebra to the horse, horse to the zebra. And with respect to my own problems, I can use anything. Finally, just five minutes, you listen. I run certain demo so that even you can understand certain things in a better way. For example, all of you are you able to see this uh, collaboratory, collabresearch.google.com? Yes, sir. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, sir. So first I started with the image, just I show the uh, demo part, just to, just to five minutes you can see. I give the explanation. So this is a CIFAR data set, CNN. As I said earlier, convolutional neural network. What you have to understand, this one program just I explained, remaining things just I show the output, just over five minutes you wait as for the time. Okay, first I start with the import TensorFlow STF. Okay, this is a TensorFlow package. From TensorFlow.keras, Keras TensorFlow is the backend, Apiano is the backend. Import data sets, layers, models. So the Keras itself is having data sets, layers, and models. And matplotlib, this is from the data science. Data science, you are having pandas, skykitlearn, opencv, nltk, and uh, sk image, and so many things are there. A pip, a pil, p i l, pil. All these uh, concepts will be used together for developing the application. Don't, st even though you study separately, in the real time application, we will be using together. This is a small example for the understanding purpose of the audience, just I uh, brought it. This is for the CIFAR data set for classifying the images. First, I am classifying the dividing the image, train image, train image, test image, test image. And here I am doing the normalization, pre processing I am doing. This is the airplane, automobile, bird, cat, like this. Then I am plotting the images, what I have. Here only I am developing the models. For example, here, just you have to understand why I spend much more time with respect to CNN and all. Model equal to model is not sequential. Model dot, you have to add the models. So how do, because first I started with the convolution mathematically. Again, I have shown the big diagrams through the Lenet, AlexNet, ResNet, GGG. Now I am showing the implementation part. Model dot add of layers comma, con 2D. Within this con 2D, I have written some parameters. Similarly, next layer after the con 2D, max pooling 2D. Again, con 2D, max pooling 2D, con 2D. That's all. This is a small customized network I am showing. This con 2D, can you make a guess? What is the input of the size, size of the input? Anybody else? What is the size of the image in this problem in this particular statement? You look at the program. Model dot add of con 2D 32,3,3 3, 3, 3, 3. Ah, 32 cross 32 comma 32 comma 3 is the input. What is the size of the filter? In this particular statement. Where is the size of the filter? 3. Ah, a pardon? Three, 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 comma three. What is the interpretation of this thirty-two? Can you make a guess? What is this thirty-two? What should be? What it has to be? Can you make a guess? Anybody else? Input in it. Input in it. In it. No, size. no. Input. No, no. Input. Input ah. is three, comma three. What is this? Okay, okay. Input is the size of the filter. I mean, size of the filter is three cross three. What is this? density is no. it a stride no i have not specified stride parameter i have not specified starting parameter what it has to be can you make a guess this is nothing but number of filters are you able to understand please listen this is the input image 32 cross 32 plus 3 this is the uh, size of the filter 3 plus 3 but uh, 32 filters i have First, initially, I have shown some two filters separately. Please, you recall the diagrams what I sh was showing earlier. Okay, four cross four, four cross four, two times filters I was showing when I was explaining. Like this, here, 32 filters. Relu is activation function. Like this, 
you have to understand mathematically why you are going to construct the network that's why i'm telling don't uh, just roughly understand uh, roughly don't come to the conclusion that i have taken one program i have run the program means that program may be suitable for some purpose it may not be suitable for all kind of requirements so you have to go suppose for example one of the participants are told i am very happy it could be the stride but i am not specify the stride suppose i am asking the participant to specify the stride here in this particular statement itself or i am asking the participant to specify the padding in this particular statement itself is it is it possible to do yes but you have to go through the the arguments arguments of the con 2d method con 2d method available in the layer layers packages along with the class so you have to look at the package class method what you are studying the object oriented programming for c++ in that way you have to travel for the experimentation purpose i tell you most of the students when they are entering into the industry they are very weak in programming part that's with respect to the data science ai and all because they as they whatever program they remember they are able to do but whatever constraints whatever uh, case study we are giving they are not able to do i am telling on the average but uh, excellent students are able to do that is different out, out you forget about the outstanding student but average students i am thinking so the place you motivate the students to implement the program in that way again max pooling con to the max pooling summary after this this is the flattened part this is the flattened dense layer can you make a guess what is this dense layer what is this final dense dense of 10 dense of 64 what is this can you make a guess now what it should be because you started with when theoretically when we was discussing when you are going to construct the convolutional neural network it had three layers what are they convolutional layer pooling layer fully connected layer so the fully connected layer is the dense part okay so in the available time i try my level best just i have given again model that summary is there i am compiling this model this is adam is optimizer now you, there is a possibility for you to change the adam also instead of adam i can have rms prop or i can you can have sgd or momentum anything else similarly here uh, cross entropy loss here accuracy is coming model accuracy here fit is happening i mean fit is happening with respect to the test side epochs is 10 epochs again i am displaying so when you are you have already run this program uh, because this is the okay toronto uh, cs toronto.edu now image is coming if you look at the thing now con 2d scan 30 30 30 32 and max pooling now 30 30 30 32 this is the output of the con 2d so 32 filters are added so these values are very important when you are going to construct the network with respect to experimentation side this is a very small program i'm showing for the bigger side actually we may be having 5000 or 10000 or 20000 lines in the real time environment max pooling con to the one max pooling con to the one like this program is going on just i'm showing again another network is coming epochs are happening with respect to the accuracy and the loss validation loss and validation accuracy again the curve is going to happen okay i think this is the way and like this you have to run many application for example if i am want to show the data augmentation flowers just uh, with this uh, code just uh, with this program i stop just i want to show another one so what you have to do you have to write the program it has already been uh, i think we have already run the program the same thing this is what the what is objective of this program data augmentation data augmentation is used for generating the images by yourself it's an alternative of the generative adversarial networks and finally you can have you, you have to construct the network like in con 2d max pooling and again fitting and uh, you have to do normalization so many things are there and uh, again the output you have to see so this is a concept of data generating data generating in the sense that for example the given image is like this and similar to this image what kind of other real looking images i can generate that the idea is if i do not have the sufficient training data set for my problem how i can uh, generate samples by myself that concept is called as data augmentation and uh, the advanced concept of data augmentation is again auto encoder and decoder similarly auto generative adversarial models we have discussed uh, gan and again cycle gan so with this i stop uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity given uh, by the skct uh, okay college any questions from the audience side
Any questions? Audience? Hello? Hello, madam? Shall I wind up? If there are no questions, no problem. But if you want to travel on deep learning at any time, you can uh, even uh, mail me and uh, I have given my mail ID to the coordinator. Okay, you please start uh, updating lot of the lot of problems are available in the uh, deep learning. You please enjoy by yourself. Thanks a lot, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. On behalf of our uh, AC department, I thank uh, the resource person, Dr. T. Srinivasan, uh, for this eye opening session. Sir, I think it was a very wonderful session for the research doing person. Uh, sir, one more help, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, could you please share your PPT to DLBC mail ID, sir? Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Okay, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. I will send it to the organizer. Okay. Yeah, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Yeah. Participants, uh, thank you shall for I, your work. Shall I wind up, madam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Thank uh, participants. Uh, thank you for your patient listening. And I think uh, this session was an eye opening think, session for you all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Any questions, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. So the session ends. The next uh, session, you can join mm -hmm. the next session. Thank you all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.